Mr. Bessie by Roger Hargreaves. There has never been anybody quite like Mr. Bessie. He could do things ten times as fast as ever you or I could. For instance, if he was reading this book, he'd have finished it by now. lived in a very busy looking house which he built himself. As you can see, it had lots of doors and windows. And do you know what it was called? We can't cottage. Do you know why? Because that's how long it took him to build it. One fine summer morning, Mr. Busy was up and about bright and early at six o'clock. He jumped out of bread and had a bath and cleaned his teeth and cooked his breakfast and ate his breakfast and read the paper and washed up and made his bed and cleaned the house from top to bottom, by which time it was seven o'clock. Busy Mr. Busy. Now next door to Mr. Busy lived someone who wasn't quite such a busy person. In fact, a very unbusy person. Mr. Slow. If he was reading this book, he'd read it like this. He'd still be on the first page. And that signifies summer morning at five past seven when Mr. Busy knocked at his door. Mr. Slow was fast asleep in bed. He'd gone to bed for an afternoon nap the day before and somehow hadn't woken up until he heard Mr. Busy knocking at his door. Who's that knocking at my door? He called it downstairs. Good morning, cried Mr. Busy. Can I come in? And without waiting for an answer, he went inside. Where are you? He called. Upstairs, came the slow reply. So Mr. Busy went upstairs, two at a time. Good heavens, he said, you're still in bed. And he made Mr. Slow get up. And he made his bed for him, and cooked his breakfast for him, and cleaned his house for him. Poor Mr. Slow, he hated being rushed and fussed. Right, said Mr. Busy briskly, it's a fine day, let's go for a picnic. Mr. Slow pulled a face. I don't like picnics he complained nonsense replied mr busy and busy himself around mr slow's kitchen picking up a picnic for the two of them it took him a minute and a half right he cried when he finished off we go and he bustled mr slow out of his front door and off they set As you can imagine, Mr. Busy walks extremely quickly. And as you can imagine, Mr. Slow doesn't. So by the time Mr. Busy had walked a mile, do you know how far Mr. Busy had walked? To his own garden gate, Mr. Busy hurried back. Come on, he cried impatiently. Hurry up. Hurry up, replied Mr. Slow. Impossible. Oh, all right, said Mr. Busy. We'll have a picnic in your garden. Wait a minute, though, he added. The grass needs cutting. And he rushed back to Weekend Cottage and rushed back again with his lawnmower and rushed up and down cutting Mr. Slow's lawn. It took him two and a half minutes. It would have taken him two minutes, and he had to mow around Mr. Slow, who couldn't get out of the way in, a, in time. Right, cried Mr. Busy, picnic time! And together on that fine summer day, they had a fine picnic. Well, actually, Mr. Busy had a finer picnic than Mr. Slow, because he ate more quickly and had the most of the food. Mr. Beasley stretch, stretched out on the grass. That was fun, he said. I like picnics. You do? I don't, 
said Mr. Slow. Tell you what, went on Mr. Busy, ignoring him. Tomorrow we'll go on a proper picnic out in the country. Mr. Slow pulled the face and went on Mr. Busy in order to do that and get you out into the country. I'll have to call for you early than I did this morning. Mr. Slow pulled another face. See you tomorrow then, said Mr. Busy and went home and cleaned his house from top, bottom to top. The following morning, Mr. Busy jumped out of bread, bed at five o'clock and had a bath and cleaned his teeth and cooked his breakfast and he ate his breakfast and read the paper and washed up and made his bed and cleaned the house from top to bottom. By which time it was six o'clock, he went and knocked on Mr. Slow's front door. Come on, come on, he cried, time to be up and about picnic day. No reply, come on, cried Mr. Busy again. No reply, Mr. Busy went inside and went upstairs three at a time and into Mr. Slow's bedroom, expecting to find him in bed, but he wasn't. And he wasn't anywhere upstairs, and he wasn't anywhere downstairs. Bother, said Mr. Busy. I wonder where he got to. Where Mr. Slow had got to was under his bed, hiding. He didn't want to go on any picnic. Not he. Bother, said Mr. Busy again. That means I have to go on a picnic on my own. What a good idea, he said, and went to sleep, snoring very slowly.